There goes the tail rope and Charlie. Kevin's got another tail rope, but it doesn't last long. So we just sit tight and wait for the storm to pass. Luckily, the gaffs held. When it's over, we lead the marlin alongside and measure him with a gaff pole. We don't want to take him 60 miles to the scales if he's not in world record class. We then measure the gaff pole. And Bill says he could be the fish. We haul him aboard, a tough job, believe me. We advertise our success and head for port. Dolly puts the sheet over him and I drag out the water hose. It's said that dehydration can claim up to 10% of a big fish's weight in this climate. When he goes up, everyone says he's a cinch to be a world record. I think he's over a thousand, but my pessimism won't let me hope for a world beater. The scales are balanced as a hush and jock yells, he made it. He weighed 1,098 pounds for a new world record in the 80-pound line class. After seven years, we've finally made it. At anchor behind the reef, there's usually a resident groper. We feed him and tease him with old baits. He always seems to come back for more. This time he gets it down. There's no hook in it and he's away. Wall says, let me show you how to land one of these babies. And he puts on a pair of gloves and hauls away at Mr. Groper. I've got him coming now, says Wall, but Mr. Groper has other ideas. He came back, but a much wiser Groper. One day, Charlie takes the backbone out of a 20-pound tangigi with a saw-edge tube so it will swim naturally. No one has yet weighed three marlin over 1,000 pounds in one season, so we're trying for a third. That's the backbone coming out of the tube. We put the bait over, and believe it or not, we have soon got a strike. He's big, all right. At least he throws a lot of water about as I put the pressure on, this time on a 130-pound line. The wires to hand, and by comparison, he's pretty tame as I get out of the chair and sink the gaff. Then we get a tail rope on him. The position of the hook shows that he wasn't hurt. But I suppose the bigger they come, the harder they fall. We drag him aboard and Dolly says, that's three over a thousand. certainly taking up more space than the other two. We had tagged and released several marlin on this trip, and we show a flag for each one under the capture flag as we head for Cairns. This is getting to be a habit, but a very gratifying one after so many years of trying. 
he's the longest marlin we've ever seen. In fact, we couldn't get him high enough to lift his bill off the wharf. Then we had to lower him and adjust the rope so that we could lift his bill off the wharf. If he had the condition, he'd certainly be a world beater. He just clears the deck and the club president carefully adjusts the balance. Dolly has a quick word with the club secretary and IGFA representative Daphne Nielsen. Jock is joined by well-known fishing writer Peter Goadby to check the weight. One thousand one hundred and forty-five pounds, our third over a thousand for the season. Daphne notified me later that this achievement had prompted the Cairns Gay Fishing Club to name me Angler of the Year, an honor I prized very highly. With the season nearly over, we set out to tag and release as many marlin as we can in an effort to again win the Dombrain Trophy. By now, seven of the marlin tagged at Cairns have been recovered, giving the authorities valuable information about their movements. By the way, our own taggings have run into the hundreds ranging in weight from about 200 pounds to over 900. There goes another tag. Some swim away with the bait still in their mouths. They say their digestive juices soon dissolve the hook. Some fight so hard they faint. Then we put a small gaff in their dorsal fin and swim them alongside until they revive and swim away. He's getting stronger. And there he goes under his own power. Here's one of Dolly's filmed accounts of a very funny attempt to tag a very lively marlin with a very short tag pole. Dolly yells, I'm running out of film. Throw it at him. But he won't present himself. I took her advice this time. Now watch the dart practice. It worked. With a longer pole, I can now tag him in midair. Here's one that was very close to the 1,000 pound mark, but he's in good shape, so we tag him and he swims away. Here's one all lit up like a Christmas tree. These are the marlin that give the anglers such satisfaction when they swim away. It's far more fun than hauling them in just for the picture. We sincerely hope that anglers will learn to enjoy the snip of the wire cutters instead of the snap of the camera shutters. Mm -hmm.